thousands of years ago, they were Apollo, Zeus, Ares. Now they are Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and the other heroes and villains of DC and Marvel Comics. Join us every week as we discuss the legendary stories, characters, concepts, and other parts of comics as we examine the modern pantheon of heroes. Let's get heroic. Welcome to Under Two Cates, the podcast for the comic book fan. Welcome to Under Two Capes. I am Jared. And I'm Lad. And today we are talking about a very special topic. So Lad and I were at the beach and with our group, we were, group, with, like, we were with a group of pals like yeah. at the beach hanging out. A group of guys, we started talking about comic books. And so they said a comment like about how Superman is such a boring character. Uh-huh. So it got me thinking. We decided to all agree with it at the end. So it got me thinking. I figured let's do an episode where we actually debunk that theory yeah so first off lad give us your thoughts on superman uh yes the the boy scout superman likes to tout himself as a pretty important character but honestly he's just a farm boy he's kind of you know uncool with the that little part of his hair that kind of comes over his head you know curl yeah i think i think superman is a bit overrated I'll give you the underwear on the outside of his pants is stupid. Yeah. Superman's underwear on the outside is the best part about him. The reason why when Snyder was doing Man of Steel when he was designing the suit, he said that I tried it with the underwear on the outside and it looked stupid. I, 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 that's not, I actually think Superman is pretty cool. I think that's what I said though, is like what people think about him, that he is a bit, um, you know, like he seems like, well, he has every power. So what's so cool about him? They, he can pretty much just get away with, uh, anything he wants to do he has no struggles no problems i think that's what a lot of people say about him but i, I think he's pretty interesting like because when you start delving into his stories a little bit you actually get some depth you find some of that struggle of having you know god tier level powers and what it what it does to a person well yeah because and they played with through this like a lot in the man of steel uh in, in uh, zack snyder's dc movie specifically but comics wise they played through it a lot where like in the new 52 per se because that was part of the impetus for him getting together with wonder woman because they both have these god tier powers and they both feel like they can't be themselves around anyone else but those two yeah plus the fact you see here's the thing now i can understand where people are coming from on this topic about superman being just this like really um boring character because i mean he's all powerful so there's not that much struggle right mm. however when you look at the comics the struggle is sometimes like a struggle with superman's morals like there was yeah. a storyline where superman he can't lie right yeah. you know i mean he, he that's one of those things he doesn't lie, he doesn't lie. and he doesn't kill so there's this one point where dark side will allow him to pass or like dark side was threatening a planet yeah and superman and he, he he told superman okay i won't i'll go away if you take a life mm. and, and here's the thing the way the storyline was written it's called superman for tomorrow which I, I think it's for tomorrow the point is um it, it's left ambiguous to both the reader and dark side if superman did it Wait, really? He, he could be lying or he could not be lying. Mm, interesting. So th- those are types of moral qualities con- you can get S- Superman into. Plus the fact in the death of Superman, he fought a being that was almost as powerful as him, freaking Doomsday. Yeah. And in Man of Steel, he fought General Zod. That's, not, that's why they gave him, that's why they said, oh, Zod survived too, because they have to have like a Kryptonian-like yeah. enemy, because otherwise it's like, yeah, he, he, he could easily one-punch everyone. Right. Plus the fact... He, he here's the thing about him so he has all this power right and he could easily kill anyone but he doesn't he holds back yeah that, that's a good point about it that you know superman has to be careful a little bit with what he does and who he you know who he's dealing with because like you know if he's you know capturing some criminals you know and then he just like punches someone and just like sends them to like Ooh. mars basically you know just like 
he he has to you know be careful what he's doing and he has to always be walking around in eggshells when he's dealing with anyone on on earth right mm -hmm. so that, that's something you know about him that he always has to show restraint and you see like you know other heroes sometimes have to go like you know full out crazy and you know like say characters like you know we see on arrow show i you know arrows like really dark you mean the batman who shoots arrows yeah that guy he's you know he goes all out crazy and you know he ends up killing some people the bad guys right but mm -hmm. that's the extent of his power but if superman were to just go all out crazy and you know like take out the enemy he would just like wipe out a lot of people and be like really destructive injustice yeah basically what happens in justice or if they did a movie i think it was like the james gunn's like brother did a movie mm. called brightburn which is pretty much a kid that has the exact same power it's basically superman's origin but what if he turned evil really and this kid is like this kid kills everyone oh man it's really that simple so then let's see what else so yeah, they played off of that. So you, and then we get into like the new 52 era. And the thing about the new 52 is that a lot of people talk about Zack Snyder's Superman and Man of Steel, but it was too dark and everything. Mm -hmm. That's what Superman was like in the comics at the time. That's probably why a lot of people didn't like the new 52 Superman. Yeah. I liked him. Mm -hmm. But it was part of the, the reason why is because he felt isolated from everyone else because also the difference... Uh, between pre uh, the pre new 52 world and the new 52 worlds that in the new 52 world martha and jonathan kent died in a car accident i see so what that means is that superman did, didn't have th this group of people to say go out be yourself have yeah. your powers and everything and they addressed that in doomsday clock by the way oh nice and, and and then that was all dr manhattan's machinations mm -hmm. in order he was playing an experiment to see if he changes superman how does that change the world around him and that's why we got the new 52 earth <laughs> so anyway that so without those people that tell him to to go out and be outgoing with people he was very like very like i don't want to say reclusive but he was kind of like he wasn't outgoing i guess i'll go with that and so he didn't feel like he fit in anywhere that's partly why he joined the justice league yeah and then he didn't feel like he could actually be himself around people and that's where we, we get the superman yeah. wonder woman thing and then it wasn't until like Let's see the end or so where he started acting like the traditional Superman, and then then we got we got the whole introduction that in the new Fifty Two, Doctor Manhattan had separated the pre New Fifty Two Superman from the New Fifty Two. Yeah, and it was they're both the same guys. It's just they were both separated, mm -hmm. and then they merged in the storyline Superman Reborn, which was good. But I'm like, I don't want, I don't, I don't yeah. want, I don't want my Superman to die. Yeah, it's kind. Of interesting but that's the other thing about superman and you you brushed on that this is a guy who has the power to burn down the world yeah but he chooses to be its servant right and, and it's kind of funny supergirl zod i think and like and my supergirl i'm talking about lara kent who was his daughter in in, in the dark knight returns universe okay. even she's like wait a second you have all these powers you could rule them but you're a servant yeah how does that work right it's because she never had that uh the, the jonathan martha kent because what the jonathan martha kent taught him is is to use your powers to benefit everyone else and not just yourself mm, I see. So, I, uh, so what do you think lad no the that aspect of superman there right because i mean why wouldn't he try to take over the world or you know rule people you know even for like a, a good purpose you know like saying like i'm gonna keep the whole world safe by ruling everyone kind of like injustice style right yeah except maybe not as harsh you could say but but like that aspect about him where he's gonna be a servant to everybody instead mm -hmm. right that's that's really incredible because with a person with his power i think most people would say well yeah i would go for it because I mean, most people want to try to get to the top of the corporate ladder they want to be the president or the ruler of the world and you want to gain most people try to get more power uh sometimes selfishly sometimes unselfishly and you know you can see what that does to a person how that shapes your morals there so superman's a person that could do all those things but he chooses not to and that's that's important aspect about him that, that he would you know he's willing to be a servant instead of you know the king and it's also an important point is that the th going to injustice because i think that's a good point to bring up so the whole impetus for injustice is because lois lane dies and now you may and metropolis dies with her now you may be wondering why would that like cause superman to go crazy it's because here's the thing 
because Superman considered himself like a human in yeah. addition to being a Kryptonian because he was he was came here as a baby, so he was raised here. Now the thing is, is that with Lois Lane, he had a link to humanity. When she died, he lost that link. And the thing about Kryptonians is that they're very cold, calculating, and logical. Yeah. They don't consider that. I, I believe you know, that this was established like fairly recently that, that the Kryptonians are like sort of unemotional and very they they're basically like Vulcans. Yeah. They don't necessarily consider the morality of a decision, but they consider it based on like the utility for Krypton yeah. itself. That's why Zod was like, yeah, I'm willing to like completely destroy an entire civilization in order to rebuild Krypton. Right. I mean, that's what any country would do, I think. They they mm -hmm. take out, they destroy another country so that they can... To, to fulfill their own interests. Yeah. yeah. That's called realism, people. But, it, it, but yeah, so Sadly. the thing about Superman is that he's constantly struggling... Mm -hmm. First off, he's struggling to hold himself back because he doesn't want to by accident kill someone. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's this great scene in Justice League Unlimited, the very end when he's fighting Darkseid, and he goes, for so long, I've had to hold back, and the All world right. felt like cardboard. But I, well, with you, I can cut loose because you can take it. And he, is just, he basically mana steals Darkseid through buildings. Wow. It's one of the greatest fight scenes ever, and I hope that if and when, that when they continue the Snyderverse, they have that that yeah. they at least do like something according yeah. to those lines, because that would be amazing. That's insane, yeah. Because that that'd be on the level of the not impressed thing, because that'd be so good. So, and the th and another thing I think people don't like people ignore about Superman is the symbolic nature of him as a character, because what because Superman himself is supposed to be like that beacon of hope and that yeah. beacon of positivity that no matter how bad things get, it, it, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And they right. did this when Grant Morrison did All-Star Superman. That was the one where he gets a, a lethal dose of solar radiation thanks to Lex Luthor. And he has one year left to live. Really? Now what he does is he uses that one year to help everyone else he doesn't like he's, he basically continues being superman and there was this pa this set of panels where this girl is about to jump off a building because she feels depressed and everything he comes up behind her and goes you're so much stronger than than you may know it's always it's it's never this dark you don't have to do this mm -hmm. i think much and, and also the other members of the justice league bring this up because it's like the, they all ultimately are are inspired and based off of superman that's why to a degree, Superman can be argued to be the leader of the Justice League. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they, they make this point because in Action Comics 1000, they had a storyline where it was basically Superman Day, kind of like that Spider-Man yeah. Day scene from Spider-Man 2. Yes. And Wonder Woman goes, you know, we're your fans too, because if it wasn't for you, we probably wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's another aspect of it, that the other heroes look up to Superman as, a, you know, inspiration also on what they can be like, right? Yeah, plus... Yeah. I'm so sorry, go ahead. No, no. Plus, so we covered Doomsday Clock on, on the podcast. Mm -hmm. One of the key points of Doomsday Clock, so Dr. Manhattan goes to the DC Universe because he's trying to figure out, why is my world always falling apart? Why is it always going into war mm -hmm. and, and negativity? Why is it always being destroyed? Yeah. As it turns out, he discovers that it's because there isn't a Superman. Right. So what he does is he kidnaps a kid from these two supervillains raises that child gives him the powers and puts him in the world and he says my name is clark really so in other words he creates a watchman world superman and that's the idea of saying and they establish this in doomsday clock the dc universe revolves around superman which is kind of it's legal because he created the dc un i mean yeah. he the whole dc universe was created with him mm -hmm. right Superman's aspect there. Yeah. Plus the fact, and they have this great scene in Batman Hush where Batman is fighting Superman because Superman's like being mind controlled by poison ivy. And, uh, and so it gets kind of funny. Even Batman admits that Superman's a, a, a better man than he is because he's like, ultimately deep down, Clark's a good person and I'm not. <laughs> it's like that, that great moment. So uh, you, you, you have anything else? No, I think, I think that's, a, that's a good point to, to bring up about him. And I think, I think one thing people are always going to try to, uh, it's you, you end up comparing Batman to Superman. I think oh, everyone yeah, always, the two most popular guys, that's always something people do. And it's kind of tough because Batman is just so cool. Batman is super dope. I'll and, give you that. And so people like to put down Superman because they want to like lift Batman up and they want to push Superman down a little bit. So it's kind of tough 
because Batman is really, you know, he is like an A-list character. He's that, Batman. He's, he's Batman, right? And some people will look at Batman and say like, oh, he has like all these troubles and problems in his life. And then they look at Superman, they perceive it that he doesn't have any problems or struggles. So that's why Batman's cooler. You know, Batman's parents died and all this. But that's you true. see that Superman... You know when you when you dig into Superman's he character, deals yeah. with his own uh, problems because when he uh, because he, he also did, did deals with the fact that he lost his entire people. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, directly addressed that in all of the occasions where he discovers he's a Kryptonian yeah. because he's like, I, I am truly alone in this galaxy. Yeah, that's also what draws him to Wonder Woman. But, but I've already talked about that. Mm. Now let's see what else I want to bring up. Okay, so now let's talk about Zack Snyder's portrayal of Superman. Yeah. Because I believe you and I have seen all three of Snyder's DC movies, right? Yeah. Okay. What do you think of Man of Steel? Yeah, Man of Steel really showed... He, uh, one thing real quick. Even though it showed a darker Superman. Right, right. It actually showed, I think, someone like... I mean, I guess I've never watched the classic Supermans, but, you know... Uh, you of all people have never seen Christopher Reeve's Superman? It looked a little bit... This coming from the guy that watched Adam West Batman. That's different because he's Batman and Batman's cooler than Superman. Good point, but that's besides. Yeah. So go on. And and I don't know, like it really brought a lot of character to Superman. Like I guess I'd only watch some of the classic cartoons of Superman, so I think he's not as interesting. But Super but, Friends, Super Friends, right? But Man of Steel really brought this like incredible depth to the character, where he's really like struggling through a lot of problems, even though he has all these powers. But he's really dealing with a lot of problems that are connected to his himself, the world around him. And, you know, I think that's really interesting to see that. Well, portrayal. I think I think the reason why his movies got so criticized is because he was directly addressing all the points that we're making in this episode. Yeah. And people didn't want to see that because they, they want to see Superman as like this perfect paragon. Yeah. They don't want to see him have his own problems being a super because really what Snyder did is realistically this is what would happen if Superman came to Earth yeah because it's like he's not automatically accepted like he is in the Christopher Reeves movies yeah. he's in fact suspicious by the media that's mm. that's key there yeah and then it all it takes him dying at the hands of doomsday for him to be accepted yeah that's a good point yeah that, that, that really brings some more like realism to the character it yeah. feels like like you know something that could actually happen it humanizes him yeah because it it tries to make him uh, it, it because what i think snyder was doing is he was fighting against that stereotype that we talked about superman is just a really boring character yeah i think that definitely that is something that you know played against him there where he wanted to challenge that that notion of superman being a boring character where he actually you know took from the mythos of superman and built you know this version of him that you can actually see clearly all these struggles and problems that Superman has and give him a lot of depth. Like Man of Steel did incredible things of giving Superman so much depth to the character, you know? And, you know, at the time, I feel like many of us thought it was really weird. Like, I don't know if I, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was cool, but maybe uh, a lot of people perceived it as just too dark or not as, you know, Superman, normal Superman movie would be like. Another thing people didn't like is the whole Jonathan Kent saying, don't be who you are. And, and yeah. it's like, don't save me from the tornado, but that's because... If he saves someone, he's obviously outed. Right. And even make the point in the comments, in the comments, comics, um, when Clark goes to Metropolis to become Superman, his father goes, okay, be very careful when you reveal yourself because once you let that genie out of the bottle, it's not going back in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's what Jonathan Kent is doing. And, and that builds to the point in, in, in uh, Justice League when it, it, he puts in the black suit, he emerges and he's about to take off and his father says, fly son, it's time. You need yeah. to show them who you are. Right. He wasn't ready back then. Now he is because he's given his life for humanity. Right, that's a, that's a good point about it. Anyways, also here's the thing. Justice League can be argued to be also a Superman movie because when you think about it, even though he's not there until like the last quarter of the movie really, what that is, it's, his whole presence is felt because what it's showing is that first off the league can't fight without Superman. Mm -hmm. They need him. And then also it's, it's the whole idea about how most people are inspired by Superman. And even flash said, as they're digging up his thing, he was my hero. Yeah. They're establishing what Superman means to the overall DC universe, even though Superman has be only been there for like, I think two years, because that's the time. I, I think the time from Man of Steel to Justice League is like three or so years, because I know two years from Man of Steel to BVS, and then one year, I think, from BVS to, Man to, uh, to, to JL. And 
And it's like, that's why, that, that's why when Superman comes back in that dope ass scene with the axe on the shoulder, yeah. first off, they play the hopeful music. When Wonder Woman lands in front of Steppenwolf, she has a big grin on her face and yeah. everyone's j- j- juggling him back yeah. and forth, which is the greatest. That was great. That was the, the not impressed scene yeah. still blows my mind to this very that day. Really that That is not, because that's also Superman. That, yeah. Because what Snyder was doing is he wanted to build Superman to, and I think that's why when Justice League came out, the the good version, people were like, oh, I was wrong about Zack Snyder. I actually want to see this because people yeah. saw he was going to get to that point. In fact, yeah. I believe at the end of Justice League 3 is when he finally, because that's when he comes back in the blue and red suit. Yeah. And that's when he would finally be, be, or be ready to embrace, fully embrace his role as Superman mm-hmm. because he'd be leading all the world's, the, the entire army scene from, yeah from uh for, for um from the movie from from justice league that would have happened except led by superman that'd be really cool which please for the love of god make part three so i could see that that's the end game moment of gc mm-hmm. with the, the, the green lanterns emerging mm-hmm. but I, I think what's oh, yeah and what was important to realize is that yeah that, that's why you saw so many people going i was wrong about Zack snyder i was wrong about Zack snyder because you really have to be able because now you saw the context around what he was, because what Snyder was doing is, is he's like, I'm not gonna automatically start Superman at this, at this point because too long, too many times when Superman's origins, he's automatically at that point where he's this great big hero and everything. He's not, he's automatically like the best at everything. Yeah. And that also works with, in Man of Steel, all that civilian damage, all the civilian casualties because he's mm-hmm. not trained enough to use his powers. And then I, I guess people didn't like the whole, so, okay. what do you think of Superman killing Zod? Oh, Superman killing Zod. Yeah, I mean, that, that was like an interesting part for, for Man of Steel there where he was basically put into a situation where he had to make a choice. Yeah, that, that was intense. It really, it really shows like, you know, his beliefs and his character there when, when he has to go through that. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about that? I liked it because here's why. He's showing where Superman's no-kill rule came from. Because mm. here's the thing. Just ki- killing Zod was more than just killing a super a superhero. Uh, it's killing a supervillain. He was killing, as far as he knew, the last of his race. So yeah. he was essentially killing Krypton again. Right. But he had to because there was, there was no way around it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's like, well, like for this way, it's like, I get why people didn't like Superman killing people. But what you have to realize is that he's not at that point yet where he's Superman. Mm-hmm. In fact, when you think about it, he was at that point in BVS because remember when he was fighting Batman, he goes, stay down. If I wanted it, you'd be dead already, bro. Yeah. And remember, his deal with, with Luther was you kill Batman, I'll, I'll let Martha go. Mm-hmm. And remember, he still was trying to hold out and say, come on and help me, guy. Yeah. Come on and help me, guy. It wasn't until the, it, like, he, because he was going to be speared through, through, through the chest with a kryptonite spear, but he still took that instead of kill Batman. Yeah. Because he could have very easily killed Batman. That's, that, that's the thing. Whenever Batman and Superman go, go to fight, I used to say Batman would win, but it's really Superman. Because Superman has the speed of the flash combined with super strength. He could have just sped at, at Batman, just thrown him into the sun. Yeah. Problem solved. Sure. So it's like ultimately I'm like okay, but Batman's cooler. But Batman looks cooler. That's true. <laughs> I mean, now let me say, which costume do you like more, the black suit or the blue and red suit? Oh, uh, the blue. And, well, okay, okay. The black suit's like so incredible. It's really hard to compete with that. They made a really. Uh, this yeah. thing. That was CGI color. Really. They didn't actually because here's why. He wanted to make a black suit, and this is before Snyder stepped yeah. off from the movie. But Warner Brothers, because they were concerned about the dark feel of his movies, mm-hmm. didn't want even a black suit. Mm-hmm. So they made so he, he used the, the red and blue suit, but then he keyed it in Photoshop to black. So if, he, if they ever changed his mind, he could just hit, hit a switch. Boop. Nice. So that's why. And it'll, you would never know it's CGI. No, yeah, it looked really great. First off, the CGI in that movie, for the short amount of time they had to work on the CGI in that, even Steppenwolf's armor, the spikes, it's like... Psh- yeah, that looked that looked really incredible. Mm-hmm. All right, so anyway, so beyond that, okay. Now, what do you think of Superman in BVS though? Now, no, right. uh, one thing I want to say is that a, a t- Lad has not seen the Ultimate Edition, as far as I know. I so I'll f- fill in any gaps. I'll let you know if anything's that uh, explain the Ultimate Edition. Right. Continue. Uh, in the Ultimate Edition, you, or, or, or like in BVS. Yeah, in BVS. Yeah, you see Superman. You know, he's going. You know, he's a bit more traditional you know you see maybe changed a bit from man of steel where he is 
uh, you know, doing his reporter job, dealing with, you know, the people in the media are like trying to make him seem bad. Like, you know, it was actually Lex Luthor, but like, you know, mm-hmm. claiming that it was his fault for an international incident. And he's, you know, he's trying to do what's what needs to get done. And you, in, you know, you see him in count, you know, he's seeing Batman and he, they have a beef with each other because he sees Batman as someone who, you know, goes against civil liberties and you know, vigilante, vigilante, you know, attacking people. Uh, and Superman's like not okay with that. Superman says like, well, this guy needs to be, this guy should be shut down. You know, he, this version of Batman has been operating for like 20 years or something like that. And it feels like, you know, this vigilante is just running loose here. And then you have Batman on the other hand, that's looking at him and saying, uh, this guy has the power to just wipe out all life on earth if he wanted to. You know, how do we know we can really trust him? And he saw what happened to, uh, you know, Metropolis when Superman and Zod fought. And His how building that... was the one that, that, that was he, he that didn't have. Yeah, exactly. You know. Uh, and then he, he had that nightmare too. Right. So he doesn't, so he doesn't trust Superman there. And he, he really is thinking like, you know, he really could just destroy everything. So we really can't, we have to deal with him as a threat. You know, he's a threat. So he wants to try to take out Superman also. So they really have, so Superman, so they both have beat each other for a reason there. And Good Super- reasons, yeah. I, I think so. It's not just like, I hate you because you're in a black city. Yeah, it's like, I hate you because you're so cool, Batman. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you see a Superman, like, but he is, he wants to stop Batman because Batman, it seems like he's going over the bounds of what he should be doing. And, you know, he's not completely wrong. I mean, like, you see him, Batman's like willing to kill Superman, you know, like oh, because yeah. he sees his Batman is willing to kill. And that was another point that people hated with Batman versus Superman, ignoring the fact that Batman really doesn't have that no kill rule. Mm-hmm. And in every Batman movie, he has killed people. Right. Yeah. Like, in fact, he killed the Joker in the 1989 movie. That's a good point. So I'm like, guys, have you not, re- first off, have you not read a Batman comic? Because pretty much he's killing fools. Really? In the comics also? His first appearance, he had a gun. <laughs> and then there's the scene as an example well first off there are two scenes i want to tell you about he once grabbed he once noosed someone from the bat plane and just flew off with them attached to the bat plane oh and then he was swinging by one time and he just kicked this dude's head to the point was neck snap what <laughs> yeah that was the old batman oh and plus you're telling me that when batman like rams a car that explodes he's not killing people no really the same way that when tie fighters explode they're not killing the people inside them are they no comment <laughs> but, but yeah it's, it's like superheroes kill all the time oh, okay so anyway so yeah so i liked how in man how in batman vs superman they gave like legitimate reasons for mm-hmm. oh by the way the movie was not supposed to be called batman v superman right. it was supposed to be called justice league rising or something like that mm-hmm. but the but Warner brothers in their inf in their infinite diswisdom uh, I, I think it's a word i'm coining it it's my word now decided that it would only sell if it was batman and superman on the title they didn't think justice league would sell batman that's why for, that's why for a batman that's why for a batman superman movie you have wonder woman flash green lantern and cyber and uh, not green lantern cyborg and aquaman showing up in the movie i'm like yeah, what it did feel a bit weird that everyone else was showing it's up an assembly it, of the justice league come on it was like a precursor to it but bvs is a really ca- i mean honestly that marketing yeah. was so that was catchy here's the thing the movie didn't really have a long batman which is, hang on for a second that's how long honestly the battle in the dark knight returns comic book lasted so yeah. when everyone's like the battle lasted only 10 minutes have you read the comic yeah, yeah no granted they marketing they, they market the hell only using that fight so right. i could see why people would be a little pissed off at that but you know you you saw that his character there and how he's you know, trying to process the world that he's in and dealing with the threat of Batman. And also, you know, you know, there's also the Batman is dealing with some of the stuff with Lex Luthor and he's running around and he's trying to get and the then, kryptonite. And Superman dealing with Luthor. Right, yeah, they're, they're, you know, dealing with Luthor there. And you see Superman, you know, put into a situation where his mother is now in danger and he wants to save her. Uh, and, you know, Luthor's really gone for kind of like his, only other weakness you know like some of his family members right mm-hmm. uh and because he gave a, a, a batman the kryptonite right and he could have just taken out batman uh yeah because batman's a dude yeah he's badass yeah. but he's a dude right right 
and they could have defeated him, but he didn't want to, you know, even if Batman was actually like a vigilante, he wasn't, he was saying like, I, you know, we could team up and stop Luther together. Mm -hmm. And And that's what happened at the end. Well, the the, the best thing with the Martha scene, Mm -hmm. because what that did, I know that scene took heat, but yeah. The way I interpreted that scene is that at that point, Batman saw Superman not as an alien, but as a but as a dude mm. that was trying to protect his mother, and mm. that's why it started the scene with the death of Batman's parents. Mm. Right. Because otherwise, because that's establishing that that scene in the beginning. Because I, I know p- people critiqued him for that. Why are you always showing? A, 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 we know Batman's origin. That contextualizes the Martha scene that comes later. Mm. But. Besides the point, it's not a discussion about Snyder's movies. We will do an episode on that. That that'll be super cool. Yeah. All right. But anyway, yeah. So, and I feel like that that's why um, at the end of BVS, when Superman is finally like, okay, I, I got to kill this guy. It's gonna kill me too. So yeah. that's why he he takes up the spear and just. Yeah, he defeated Doomsday, and does that kind of kill him? Yeah. He stabbed him through the chest with a kryptonite spear. He's like a monster. There's a monster, so I guess it's like, it's a, see, superheroes are allowed to kill monsters. It's fine. Yeah. Look at Wonder Woman. She, actually, Wonder Woman kills everyone. So Look at the Power matter. Rangers. That's true. They've never killed a human count a human enemy. Well, because it's that's illegal then. That's true though. Then it's murder. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Off point. But Power Rangers about the Superman. Superman. You know, we see him there. He's you know. He's going to go and take out Doom that even means it's going to cost him his life, you know? And here's the great part. So uh, jumping over to Justice League, uh, I, I, I liked first off the visual of his like sound waves awakening the mother yeah. boxes. Because with that establishment, Batman makes his point. Dark, uh, Dark side never came because he was scared of Superman. Mm-hmm. Dark side. Yeah. Imagine Dark side. Yeah. The being that can, uh, Dark side. A being more powerful than Thanos, yeah. Even that has his true form, where he's basically a god, is afraid of Superman. Right. That should tell you something about Superman. Yeah. Even uh, even Stephen was like, "No Kryptonians, no lanterns. Let's do this, boss." Right. Yeah. Now's a good time. And then he comes back, and you can see Stephen was like, "Oh no!" Right. It's yeah. like he, he, he oh, when like when Superman. Uh, um, frost breaths his axe and shatters that you can see uh, Stephen was like. <laughs> it's yeah. like so scared it's like not impre- it's, it's like that you see uh, we'll talk about the scene for a second with the non press scene i think what made it so like cool is the sound of it too because it, it like clanged as yeah. it hit the shoulder because like it's hit, he's a man of steel yeah it clicks in and he's like not and then he i, I, I love what he does next i know it's not watching the scene for like the 200th time today he just turns his head like this yeah, and just it's like nonchalantly, like, all right, I gotta do this. Yeah, and that's a callback to the comics because in the comics, Steppenwolf hit him in the shoulder with like uh, he doesn't have an axe in the comics. He has like these these basically Nightwing stick things. So Superman turns to him, he's like, "You're not that smart, are you? I'm invincible." Really? And he, he um he said something around those lines. So I'm like, "Oh, that's what you did." That's the thing with Snyder. That's why I love his stuff. He puts like really deep cuts into his movies. Mm-hmm. To, to the point where I'm like, oh, I see where you got that from. That's actually not a bad idea. In fact, the whole, I think the, uh, there was that speech where, where, where Batman basically goes toward 20 years in Gotham, Alfred, and, and or, or, or what have we shown for it or something like that. One of Batman's monologues in the movie actually, um, is actually like, like from the Dark Knight Returns comics, like straight from the comics. Right. Yeah, it's like I noticed when I was reading the, the book, and it's kind of funny when I was re- reading Dark Knight Returns. First, when I got to that part, Ben Affleck's voice came on. Oh no! Nice. I was like, yes, no. Nice. That's why I love Ben Affleck's Batman. But we'll do an episode on Ben Affleck's Batman too. All right. So anyway, so and and then what Justice League is showing again to link to injustice, and that's why I think in, in, this is basically an injustice right. universe. Lois Lane gets killed, and Superman is susceptible to the anti life equation, right? Because Dark Side knows take out his heart. And you're good to go because mm. su- it- it- Superman is pretty much invulnerable. That's why Darkseid can't kill him. That's why he was afraid of him. But if you take out the thing he cares about his most, because I believe he also kills Martha Kent. Right. So everyone associated with Superman is killed in this point. Mm-hmm. But you know what I just realized? In the Snyderverse, we never had a Jimmy Olsen. Uh, oh, actually, yes, we did. He was a CIA guy that got killed in BBS in the beginning. 
in the desert. He was a dude with the camera. Oh, that was Jimmy Olsen. That was Jimmy Olsen. I'm like, really? Yeah. You just kill him off? We also had fake Jimmy Olsen from another uh a variant of jimmy olsen as the police officer that was giving oh yeah like that, that was the the, the original <laughs> jimmy olsen yeah. actor yeah that was great i love that i like that more than the jimmy olsen that they had in supergirl that became guardian yeah i was like what <laughs> come on man but we said this isn't a rant about cw but even though how much i love doing that mm. but anyway so going back to superman yeah. we are the flash <laughs> Um, Iris Allen. Oh my God! You notice how no one in the internet liked that. <laughs> All right. So anyway, it's like, it's like we are Groot, except less cool. But anyway, so basically, my whole point is that Superman is the personification of the phrase. I think never judge a book by its cover because, of course, he seems a little like a boring character, like because he's not invulnerable, invincible. But the problem is, is that he is that where he's vulnerable are his morals that's why you constantly see his villains put him in situations where he has to compromise his morals like he has to kill people or something like that yeah no that's that that is a situation where you know you you have that depth to him and i think he works really well for for like uh you know some people that you know don't really aren't interested in all the morals and questions and like you know deep stuff like that they just want to see something really cool and superman still works as like a fun character for that because you know he's lifting buildings and you know going spinning around the world and doing all these crazy stunts and like he has like a really cool power set because sometimes we feel like oh well he can do everything it's just not interesting maybe some more of the some more jaded in their, jaded people in their but. defense there was a scene in the christopher reeves movie where he rebuilds a wall by staring at it really they made a joke about that. It's like they made up superpowers. Like he reveals his identity to Lois Lane in one of the movies. Then he he kisses her and somehow is able to wipe her memory of that. Like in X Men First Class, yeah. he basically does that. Yeah. Uh, and then and it's gonna like the Great Wall of China. Is, there's a big gaping hole in the Great Wall of China. He just stares at it. Repair vision. That's kind of interesting. I'm like, what? Yeah. And apparently, going backwards around the Earth reverses yeah. time for some reason. But. <laughs> I mean, he's still like a fun character. Like, I think a lot of kids and and even older people will appreciate just like you know, oh, he's really fun that he can you know just stop the bad guys and he's really strong. He can laser vision, go into the water, like all these crazy stunts that he can do these things. You know, in fact, in Rebirth, Superman when they started DC Rebirth and they were, and they brought in the pre new fifty two Superman, this was also the introduction of Jonathan Kent Superboy. And what that did is. It plays Superman in a new position. He has to raise a son. Mm -hmm. So he's essentially taking up the role of Jonathan Kent, the senior. Yeah. Yeah. To uh, He's teaching his son how to be a superhero and how to how to be that beacon of hope that everyone wants. That's why everyone's, that's one of the many reasons why people were pissed off when Bendis took over Superman. Because first off, he aged up Jonathan Kent. So you lost all that character growth because mm -hmm. the opportunities for the character growth. And then he basically like, made a bunch of changes to superman status quo that people didn't like mm -hmm. like they keep changing how krypton exploded don't care about it the point is it exploded right but yeah so so the, based on my point is is that it, is that superman does does actually have uh, is actually a very complicated character yes. in fact wait one more, one more thing i want to mention superman doomed so in the new 52 so they basically did like a new 52 version of like the death of Superman mm -hmm. where he fought Doomsday for the first time. Except in this one, first off, this is when he decided, I don't have a choice. I have to kill this guy. And he has a conversation with Batman and Wonder Woman. He's like, I don't have a choice. There's no way I can stop this guy. Mm -hmm. And then he gets infected with the Doomsday virus, which makes him start to turn to Doomsday. So he's actually, so that's the thing about it. He's fighting himself, Doomsday. Yeah. Scary. And what they established is that he's, he, he actually decides, I have to leave Earth because I'm not going to be able to control myself. Mm -hmm. I have to get out of this. Yeah. And, and and again, that's what makes Superman such a great character. The lengths he'll go to protect people. He will leave the planet permanently, leave his loved ones, his girlfriend, mm -hmm. everyone to protect humanity. That's intense. That's the, he will go to the... That's the other thing that's very great about Superman. The length he will go to protect the human race. Mm -hmm which kind of is shown in Injustice too. He'll turn into a dictator to protect everyone. Right. That's awesome. Wait, wait, so uh, I hope through our tirade, let me see how many, how much time we have. We've been recording. We can go for a little longer. But anyway, so, okay. So, so how do you view Superman then? Like personally, how do you, 
do you do you see him as a cool character? What do you think about him? He's my favorite superhero. Really? Because I've been very like vocal about how, how my three favorite superheroes, at least in the DC side, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Superman more so because here's the thing. Batman's cooler. Batman is super dope. That's why mm -hmm. those three are tied for number one. I really can't pick between among those three. But Batman is cool. Batman is cool, but here's why I like Superman. And, and this goes into the whole hope thing because so I already mentioned about how growing up, I spent my fair amount of time in the hospital mm -hmm. just going out. And there, there, there were times where I almost didn't make it. Yeah. So there was a point where, and this was around the time where I discovered the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. And I, I brought, I went into the whole thing about how that was uh, very important to me becoming, um, getting into comic books. If you want to see that story, go, go to like our one year anniversary episode. Yeah. But the point is, is that, I always remember that no matter how how bad my own little life experience got, there was always a Superman comic where he goes, "Hey man, you can do this. It's it, um it's oh, it's gonna be okay." Yeah. So that's that's the thing about Superman is that he personally has been that beacon of hope, at least for me, in, in that mind it, throughout all these tough times in my life. That's really cool. That inspiration there. Yeah, yeah, and th and then that's another th that's another thing that uh, people miss about Superman is that inspirational capacity that this character has. Because again, I've said this many times in the episode, but he has the power to destroy everyone, but yeah. he loves everyone. Because mm -hmm. again, everyone tells him you could you could rule, and no one could stop you. Really, yeah. realistically, yeah. no one could stop him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he just decides, no, you know what? I'm going to protect you. I'm going to serve you. Just mm -hmm. have me what you want. It's a very Christ-like mentality, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, you, you can find many parallels, particularly to, I think, Jesus and Moses for Superman. I was thinking Moses, he, too, actually. Because yeah. he's placed in a ship, a, yeah. a vessel, <laughs> and then sent away from his home, like, that's lands like, his adopted home, and, like, saves it, right? That's actually kind of clever, eh? That he, that's yeah, like a Moses example, of like the the ship, like the little arc, the safety, right? Yeah, and then Jesus and the, the, the yeah. whole giving his life for everyone. If you notice, when he comes back in the in the Snyder cut and he flies up into the air, he go, he assumes the full T pose, right? Like, yeah, of the Christ thing in the sky. Yeah, the Christ pose. Yeah, I, I I do really like those. That is a pretty interesting comparison for him, right? Because he he does he's like a servant to everyone, right? Instead of using that power, like you know, to because once again, be cruel. God. It, it, <sighs> He rules us, if yeah. you will, but but he could he, he essentially become a, a, a um a dictator in right. that sense if he wanted to. Yeah, you know, it could be like, well, you're just you're all you're all like uh you're you all know, a, a, you're all a holes. Yeah, you gonna... guys turned against me, so uh guys are all done for, you know. But like he sends that like you know that uh you know there's a hope for salvation, you know, if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, and you can you know he provides that uh. You know there's that uh chance to be saved and superman does the same thing where he's like you know he wants to save people and you know he he's not going to go there and destroy everyone and take over he's not going to force anyone to you know to be you know to be the good guy but he's going to save the he's going to save as many people as he can and he's going to serve other people while he doesn't in, in fact yeah he um they made this point in bbs too because one of the news anchors that that's like talking about superman yeah. that's participating in the debate goes i think that we're attributing too much to this guy to say he's like a messianic figure what if he's just a guy that's trying to do the right thing <laughs> it was even at the end of man of steel he goes uh he goes general i'm just here to help yeah and i love this it's my one of my favorite scenes from man of steel is when the general goes how do we know you're not gonna like act against the united states and then superman goes i grew up in kansas general yeah. i'm as american as you can get and yeah. i'm like yes yeah and as i was saying about superman too he is very representative of the American spirit, true to justice in the American way. Yeah. That's why, there, and I, I, I included this picture in my paper when I talked about it because there's this image of Superman. So he has his hand on, on his um, thing like this. There's the American flag behind him. He has his arm out like this and a bald eagle's on his arm. <laughs> yeah. Like the, plus, his suit is kind of the variation of the red, white, and blue when you think about it. Yeah. In that Captain America vibe. Mm -hmm. In fact, also, and then to, to uh, um, one more thing I want to mention about the effect that Superman had, and this was established in the storyline Kingdom Come. Mm -hmm. So, context in that storyline is the whole idea about how how the normal superheroes, the the, the um, Justice League, retire. In their place, all these other new younger superheroes show up and start running amok with the world. Yeah. So Superman has to come out of retirement to to basically sit to basically fix the world. Mm -hmm. And by fix the world, I don't mean become a dictator. What I mean is is to get is to teach these superheroes responsibility because he ultimately is the example and teacher. It, it's, you can think about it this way: 
in the same way that the, that Superman can be thought of as like a super Jesus, if you will, yeah. the Justice League is Superman's tw- is um the Jesus twelve disciples. Oh, that's and that point. he's their teacher. He's teaching them how to yeah. be a hero or a, a witness or, yeah. or, or, or what have you. And he's trying to like, and they look to him for guidance because he's he's that beacon of hope. That's a good point. Yeah, so that's basically, and we will cover Kingdom Come on the podcast. That's a fantastic book drawn by Alex Ross. Mm. So great. But uh, so let's see, what, what else should, should we mention about Superman? Um, do you have anything, anything that you want to bring up about Superman? Uh, Who do you think is really the DC, the Marvel version of Superman? Oh, I mean, I, I guess you could point out Cap. I mean, yeah, because Cap is, is like a sort of aspirational figure. Yeah. I would say, I would say, yeah, I think. Character-wise, and what they represent, it's mostly Cap. Yeah. In terms of character, in terms of just powers, powers, it's just Hyperion and in, in, in the oh, Sentry, Captain Marvel, maybe. When she gets like her full powers now, full powers, her. maybe. Icarus from the Eternals. Mm-hmm. If you've seen the Eternals trailer, it's pretty yeah. much he's Superman. Is that the main guy, the from Eternals? Or he's the main dude that seems to be their leader. The, leader, the younger, the, the youngish guy. Young yeah. guy yeah. yeah, I'll show you the you, 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 the trailer. He's the one that that's like in that shot of them like yeah. assembled. He's the guy in the middle. Yeah, yeah he oh he, he's the one that when they said who's going to lead the Avengers now that uh, they're dead, and he goes, well, I could lead them. Yeah, he, the, the, that's Icarus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still wondering if I if I should read an Eternals book. I'm still like, eh. but yeah. So anyway, so I guess let me see who. So so you got Captain America, Thor maybe, and, and the whole idea behind Thor, according to Stanley, was Superman with a with a cape and, and like uh, a Norse Superman. Oh really? I can see Captain Marvel mm. a little bit, but let me see. Uh, let me see if we had to pick one person, not counting Cap. To be like the Superman like character. Huh. Yeah, there's no one else but Cap who really yeah. encapsulates that hopeful mentality of, right. of Superman. Yeah, I, I guess we'll go with that. Yeah, I guess Cap probably. But anyway, yeah, the, the, because Cap is always like, hey, listen, guys, we have to stand together and mm-hmm. and, and work together and stuff. Let's see. Okay, so and then so okay, so. Let's see what else did I want to talk about. Okay, so actually, going back to our discussion of the Injustice anime movie, are you are you excited to see a Superman that basically strips himself of his morals because he has to save the world? That's kind of crazy. I think that we're actually, you know, it, it would have been nice if it was uh, Justice League two and three that we actually got to see that firsthand. It, that could still happen. It could it still happen, but it looks Let's like soon we are going to to still get get that because this right. Uh, so it, it, it just establishes there are rumors behind the scenes that first Warner Brothers and or, or really Discovery mm-hmm. is in negotiations with David Ayer to release the Ayer cut. If the Ayer cut comes out, that pretty much guarantees we're getting the other two movies because what? why else would they release those movies? Mm-hmm. And and Discovery did say that they want to repair relations with these directors. So let's assume we are going to get those two movies down the line. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and I'd be so cool with that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And, and the fans want it. That's the, the most fans, important the fans thing. Want it. So we, we have that, you know, hopefully we have that to look forward to for that storyline of Superman. But in terms of, you know, I guess this Injustice animated movie is going to be like probably the first time we're going to, it's probably going to come out before we get uh, Justice League 2 and 3. Most likely. So yeah, I, I think it's coming out like next year or something like that. Right. So this is going to be our first foray where we get to see like kind of big time, you know, where Superman really loses his morals and we see how that affects it. So that's going to be really interesting to i think to observe because you know we saw the game and, and the game has a lot of attention a lot of hype this is going to bring a lot more attention i think people Plus, are going to see this the more. movie's a prequel to to the game so yeah you, you get the context around how we got to to the point in injustice when the when the ultimate reality batman shows up right so, so, yeah, so, so that's that so I, i'm very excited about that because i like the idea particularly if it's an elseworld story and, and, and I said that a lot about like Secret Empire early in the podcast. I've yeah. since changed my mind on Secret Empire, but I like when they use Elseworlds as an opportunity to explore like what would happen if these superheroes turned evil? Because mm-hmm. there are plenty of like non big two like products that examine superheroes as evil, like The Boys, yeah. which is pretty much the Justice League except evil. Yeah. I even saw on Amazon there's this comic book called Evil Heroes, which again there are characters that are clearly inspired by the Justice League, mm-hmm. evil. It's just, I like that idea of like uh, of, of like the superheroes turning evil. I mean, I even watched Brightburn. It was oh, yeah. very gory. I wouldn't recommend it. For me. 
It's not a you movie, lad. Got it. It's not a you movie. Let me put it that way. But it, it, it was interesting. I, I definitely enjoyed it. But let's see. You also had, by the way, if, if you want to see kind of an evil Superman, there's also Crisis on Earth 2, the animated movie, because yeah, that that, was... that, that's the one with Earth 3, right? Yeah. And it's like Earth 3 is essentially a, a world in multiverse where everyone's morals are reversed. So, so the Justice League are evil. Lex Luthor's a good guy. And, uh, and, and basically everything in this world actually um, trends toward evil. The same way in our world, everything for the most part trends good. Yeah. So it's like when the League go there in the comic book and try and like tell people, hey, we're here to help you. It always reverts back to chaos and evil. Right. Mm-hmm. It's written by Grant Morrison. Really weird storyline, but be, that's pretty much describes everything Grant Morrison writes except mm-hmm. for like maybe X-Men or so because he'll, he'll have someone like punch the embodiment of anger or something like that. I'm like, what? Yeah, that, that makes sense. They did a, they did a thing where Green, uh, so Grant Morrison has been writing Green Lantern. He had him punch God. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? what? The heck? That's like that one Star Trek movie where they go into this planet and meet God. Why would God need a starship? Star- Why does God need a starship? <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh, that's such a great movie. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like, wait a second, bro. But, but yeah, so... So that gets into uh, into that, and I definitely. Uh, but there was this one point in. I really hope this makes it into the Injustice animated movie because it's in the volume that they're adapting. I believe it, it, okay. if they're doing this volume by volume, this line is in there. So I hope it's in there. There's a scene. So Superman starts starts that move toward yeah. being a dictator. Uh, he doesn't immediately declare himself as a world dictator, but. He, he starts behaving in unsuperman ways. So the U.S. government, in their infinite wisdom, decides to kidnap his parents, Jonathan and Martha Kent. Batman shows up in the Oval Office because he's Batman. He gets out of a shadow, he like comes out because he's Batman. He's cool. So it's like the, 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 the Secret Service, see the Batman bill pull up. He's good. Let him go. Yeah. But anyway, so Batman shows up and he, and he takes the, the president by the collar and he goes, are you crazy? They're not going to be able to find your body on Saturn. Yeah, yeah that'd be, that'd be that's, and Superman completely right. He kills like let's see, who does he kill? Kills Green Arrow. Kills um. I've already t- t- we covered this on a podcast. So it's not exactly a spoiler. So, but he he kills um not um not Captain Adam. Who's the guy that that's basically in like a silver a suit because he's made of energy yeah, in the middle? You know what I'm talking about, right? I know him, but I forget. It's not. It's not. It's it's, it's not the Adam because that's a shrinking guy. Yeah. Is that Captain Adam? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I forget. I remember him. Though. I just remember from the JLU show. Captain, because he was also in the movie. Uh, actually, I think it's Captain Adam. Hang on, I'll get my phone. So it's yeah, a little, we need to. We need to. You talk while I look that up. But you know, Superman really goes ballistic here. I think people are gonna be. It's gonna be surprising to see him. You know, it is Captain Adam. It is Captain Adam. Okay, got it. So he kills he, he, he kills Martian Manhunter. He, yeah. he like completely destroys everyone. But yeah, it, it's gonna be interesting to, to see Superman being like such an evil person because the, the, the reason why that's appealing, I think, is because it's such a departure from who Superman is in the beginning. Anyway, so I, I hope that we have convinced you, or at least yeah, convinced you to like be more like open-minded when approaching a character like Superman, because he, even though he can appear to be like a boring character, all powerful. He doesn't face challenges. He can like he can surprise you. That's why. Well, to, to the um, when we had the debate about Superman, Wonder Woman, or Batman, Wonder Woman, and uh, I, I I put a social media post explaining my argument. Mm-hmm. I got some pretty good engagement. I enjoyed it. Very it took a little sick. bit of heat, also. <laughs> no, we didn't. It was a nice uh, it, it was, okay. debate. Everyone's cool, but. To, to, uh, one thing surprised me so i told uh, so my argument was at least uh, here's the thing it may look boring read the superman wonder woman comic from the new 52 that goes into all this they didn't even know there was a comic about uh, about that relationship yeah. because yeah you don't really see it because I guess, I mean, that, that's cool <laughs> you don't exactly well, pfft. Uh, batman and wonder woman just looks to makes her look too shallow i only date rich people because i'm a princess really and again, that's another thing about, about Superman. Hang on for one second. And Wonder Woman makes this point too. When she dates him, he's the complete opposite of what the Amazons taught people oh, yeah. uh, taught her that that man is. Batman is more in line with with the with the Amazon conception of man. He lies for your own good, 
just like he lied when he said when, and he lied about the Justice League contingency plans. He has a he has a plan to kill his wife if he marries Wonder Woman. The contingency plans are you know just there just in case he kills her whenever, whenever her credit card bill comes in. <laughs> any of the any of the leaguers, yeah, yeah, yeah all the all the leaguers have like the, the Wayne Industries credit card, right? Yeah, exactly. He funds <laughs> it for the Justice League. So it's like Flash has all these like protein bars. He's like, I gotta keep up that energy level. It's like, it's like, like Green Arrow spends like ten thousand dollars just in air. Oh, yeah. And Batman's like, what the hell? And he's like, I'm constantly throwing arrows at people and they keep breaking them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Superman's the only one who doesn't buy that much stuff. So, right. so he's like, Clark, you're good. Diana, how many dresses do you need? Oh, that's beside, that's beside, they need to do a comic like that where yeah. Batman is like finding the Justice League. Yeah. And he gets the bill. He's like, what the hell? Yeah, just like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, that's funny. He'd be like, I'm putting you all on a budget with Superman. That's why Iron Man doesn't fund the other Avengers. Like we saw he like did. Falcon. He did, but <laughs> his, uh, it, so Stark Industries used to fund the Avengers, but during Avengers to disassemble when like Wanda systematically took apart the Avengers, she made him drunk, but by like it's just because she can warp reality. She like materialized alcohol in his system, made him appear drunk during a speech. Stark Industries stock tanked. Right. So he had to stop uh, yeah. funding the Avengers. That's funny. Yeah. Okay, so. Hope you guys uh, uh, at least um, could consider our argument, found us compelling. Mm. And for you Superman fans, uh, drop in the comments and tell us uh, either on Instagram or YouTube what you got, uh, why you guys love Superman and some other points that we may have forgotten about the character. And just, uh, just, uh, just anyone comment anyway and let us know if you found our argument convincing. Okay, so uh, a few housekeeping things before we go. Our friend Tyler is, is hard at work building a website. I just saw a little mock above it. It looks freaking dope. Yep. Yep. That was really it looks cool. better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, all right. do, you think, do you think he prefers Superman over, uh, you know, say Batman or like, does he, does he think Superman's really cool? Or I don't do know. I, I, I don't know. Let's ask him. Tyler, what's your opinion on Superman? He's cool. <laughs> that answers it. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Superman compared to Batman. Uh, that's a tug of war, and you know it. He he means he wants to say Batman, folks. That's what we we have we have Tyler working for us over there. He can't come on the podcast. He he's over there in his Bob Cratchit desk. Why don't you make a poll to see what your audience thinks? I would like more. Is it Superman or Batman? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do that on on, on the Instagram. We'll do that do Tyler- and on the YouTube. Yeah. Do you think Tyler likes Superman or Batman? It's a good question. Leave it more below. I'll leave in the comments and I'll put a poll on our like uh, on our YouTube about it and on Instagram. So anyway, guys, you know, so, so we're building the website. We're, we're, we're going to work on all the marketing and, and, and get some nice pictures. We're going to be updating all the art for the podcast. It's going to be really dope. Uh, and we are, are, are really excited for all this. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Stay heroic. And let's just, uh, you have anything to say to our fans? Uh, no, yes. Uh, it's a good time. Th- thanks for listening. Stay heroic, everyone. Bye-bye.